Hello, <laughs> I'm John. Today we're going to talk about cast iron. I know this piece looks horrible. Uh, we're going to fix that. Uh, today we're going to talk about seasoning your cast iron. Now, as you know, here in Houston, all over Texas, we just went through a historic weather event. It snowed. I know snow in Houston, snow in Dallas. It's crazy, but snow, freezing weather down to 12 degrees sometimes. We needed to find a way to protect our homes, cover up walls, cover up windows, because we're not built like they are up north that can sustain the cold weather. One of the things that we decided was, as you know, in northern homes, as you may know, in northern homes, they have radiant, uh, radiant heat as a source of heating their homes. We, of, of course, don't have that down here. We have forced air. They have a lot of forced air up north now, but you know what I mean. Um, we decided what I was going to do was use the gas on our stove and our cast iron to create our own radiant heat right here in our kitchen. What we didn't realize is, you can see, it really tore up the cast iron. All of my cast iron is completely rusted over. That made me think maybe I should do a video today on stripping down your cast iron right to the factory new and re-season it and making it a perfect pan. We're gonna do that today on the Chubby Hubby. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna get it wet. We're gonna use a product that I like called Barkeeper's Friend. Barkeeper's Friend is the best stuff. It's very much like Comet but not as toxic. You can't put Comet on your dishes. You can put Barkeeper's Friend. It has an ox oxidizing agent that will get anything spotless. It turns my stainless steel or my Heston into brand new. I just love the product. So we're gonna put a little bit of that, but we're gonna start by putting a little water in the cast iron so it has a little bit something to work on. Just a couple of tablespoons, just so it has a little bit of oomph. Open the package and we're gonna squirt it in there. I like to use this. I would never use this on a piece of nonstick because this is, it's chain meal. It, it will just destroy it. down a piece of cast iron. As you know with it, and we're just gonna scrub it. With a good piece of cast iron, once you've had it seasoned, it works very well as a nonstick surface. It becomes your most coveted piece of nonstick in the kitchen. We're just scrubbing it, getting it all off. What happens to make it non-stick is the oils, which I prefer, which is a grapeseed oil, is a great product to season your pan. What happens is under high heat in the oven, the polymers in the oil break down and part of them are left in the uh, heat exchange, a part of them are left um, stuck to the pan, stuck to the cast iron, and over time form a non-stick barrier or seasoning on your cast iron skillet. The more that you use it, the more seasoned it becomes. It becomes like glass. After a while, you look at it very much like one of your high-end nonstick pieces. Like, please do not use <laughs> knives, forks, or spoons in my, ca in my uh, uh, cast iron because you're going to scratch the surface. Anytime that it rusts, unfortunately, you have to start over, but that's just part of it. Here, we're taking this one down to nothing, and we're going to start over with it. So all we do is just using a little patience and very little elbow grease. The um, barkeeper's friend does everything as far as the oxidation of just getting it down to nothing. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna scrub this down. You do the same if you prefer. And we'll be right back. Um, so now what I did was I really got that barkeeper's friend in there and really scrubbed it down And then I switched to a standard little um, scrubber pad with the the rough side and the smooth side um, We needed the chain meal by the way. This is sold at Lodge Lodge.com It's also sold at Williams Sonoma sold at uh, Sur La Table. anywhere that you that sells Lodge You could pick these up. I think even at Target, but yeah So anyway, we switched to the lighter and more quieter sponge and you can almost feel that there's nothing, but you're really gonna be surprised how there's just, there's no rust left in here. So clean. This whole project should really take you uh, six and a half days, <laughs> about uh, 30 minutes at the most um, for this really tall. Now the oven, you're gonna put your oven on 425 and it's gonna go into the oven upside down for 30 minutes. 
Then we're gonna wash it with a mild soap and water. No more barkeepers, friend. A mild soap and water. Oil it again. Put it back into the oven. We're gonna do that for three times. I know it sounds excessive, but remember, your cast iron skillet is with you for a lifetime. Seasoning it and giving it the TLC that it needs, it makes it your best pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this. going to see just how beautiful there's no there's no rust in fact there's a beautiful beautiful gray that is the actual factory new cast iron we can't forget our bottom. You always have to have the bottom done. We never forget our bottoms. They have to be done. Now, as you can see, if you can get in there, you can see how nice, really nice, that is. As you can see, that looks super great. There's not a bit of rust on there and it's ready for another coat. There are little places that you can see, like in here, and just a little spot where the old resin is still there. That's perfectly okay. That's a lifetime situation that can stay there. But anything that needed to come out, came out in the amount of time that we worked that. Let me get some, tissue, let me get some paper toweling and then put the uh, oil in. Take just a second. Usually this isn't this hard to open. I'm gonna start with about a tablespoon. Is that a tablespoon? Was that more? That was probably a little bit more, but that's okay. And we're just gonna rub this. Just massage it right in to the iron. See how beautiful that is? It really, really is. I'm gonna put a little bit on the bottom. By the way, I have this, this pad on the counter, not because the barkeeper's friend's gonna do anything to your counters, but because I didn't want it to scratch it. So I just used this. This is just one of those pliable cutting boards that you can pick up anywhere, anywhere. Um, but yeah, so do the handle a little bit. You can see it's pretty much either absorbed into the paper towel or it's evenly coated. Now, you know what? I'm gonna put just a little bit more so I get a nice coat. You don't want it sopping because remember, it's gonna go into the oven upside down. So we don't, what we don't want is for it to just be slopping all over and fry in the oven. The reason we put it upside down is because if we leave it right side, when it heats up and becomes water-like, we don't want it to pool and become extra thick in the bottom. If we put it upside down with a tray, when I open the oven, you'll see there's a tray, a cookie sheet type tray in the oven. If it does happen to drip, it will then drip onto the tray. No harm, no foul to the inside of your oven. That sucks to have to clean, right? So there we go, nice coat. And what we're going to do now is we're gonna put this into the oven upside down for 30 minutes. and we'll see you in 30 minutes. Okay, so it has been three cycles. Um, I didn't wanna go through each cycle because they're pretty much the same, but what I do wanna do is review. So you're gonna take your rusted pan, use the barkeeper's friend, scour it, and then wash it out, oil it into the oven for 30 minutes at 425, take it out, rinse it, wash it, oil it into the oven for 425, rinse it, wash it, and. You do that and we're on our third cycle. It is, it, the oven just beeped. It's been 30 minutes for the third time. I know it sounds like a lot of numbers. Personally, I'm not that great at mathematics, but just so you know, it's been three times and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna take it out of the oven now. I'm really excited to see how it turned out. It's just looking like butter. Like butter.
There's something about handling a piece of cast iron in the stove that makes me nervous. And because I learned before, it's just so much added time. I like to put it into the sink and just cool it in the sink. Otherwise, it's just all that much more time. And it cools down a little bit quicker. Well, a lot quicker, actually. So we'll get this nice and cooled down. It's cool already. Oh, the handle's not too cool. We'll just. <laughs> We're just going to cool that down in just a minute. I think we're good. That just saved us a lot of time that normally we would have take it out of the oven and had to sit for a while. It's still a little warm, but not enough that we can't handle. As you can see, really come a long way from that rusty radi radiator MacGyver hack for the cold season that we went through. Now, what you've seen here is nice and dry and beautiful and shiny. It has just a little bit of tack to it. So that with the last step, just like in the other steps, we're gonna put this in the sink and I'm gonna run a mild dish detergent over it. And just suds it up a little bit. Anything that's kind of shouldn't be there that is will come off. Very, very light, almost just, just nice and easy. This should not take any effort whatsoever. We're going to give it a final rinse. And then I'm going to show you for a bonus, I'm going to show you one last trick that will keep this beautiful and shiny and nonstick for many years to come. Okay, one last dry. I love cooking on my nonstick. You know, I have several pieces of just regular, I mean, love cooking on my cast iron. I have several pieces of nonstick. They're great, but after a while, the polymers that we spoke about earlier, they build up and your nonstick turns into a brownish tinge color. And even though they're nonstick, they're never truly nonstick forever, and they need replacing every few years, and that's unfortunate. And I've gone round and round with them. Cast iron, this is a lifetime. This is an absolute lifetime. Okay, this is dry. The tackiness is gone, and it's like butter. You could fry an egg in here, and the egg would float. Try doing that on a, on a, on a stainless steel, or if you're cast iron, you can do it on a cast iron. It'll work just fine. I mean, on a non-stick, it'll work just fine. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add one last bit of oil. This is the bonus, by the way. One last bit of oil. We're gonna rub it on there. Anytime that you use the pan and you wash it, never just put it away. And don't just dry it with this Williams Sonoma dish towel. This is moist it's going to cause rust to start to happen on your pan. So what you do once you've washed it, you dry it with your dish towel that may be a little damp. But we're gonna go over to the stove because what we've done is taken a little bit of oil. By the way, look at how gorgeous that is. I mean, this is a beautiful pan. You have to say, this was our radiator. 
for the uh, bad weather we had in Houston. It's hard to believe, and it's gorgeous. And it'll go another 20 years before you have to fix it. It can go as long as, unless you want to strip it down for the fun, get in the practice. Anyway, I'm um, coming over to the stove. What we've done to get any final moisture out of there. We're just gonna wipe it a little bit, get some heat on it. That that's going to evaporate, or force to evaporate, any leftover moisture on the bottom. And just a nice smattering of oil until you feel the pan getting warm. And that's about it. It's warm now. We have a beautiful piece of nonstick, cast iron nonstick cookware. And this is going to last you forever. And that's how you do it. I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed watching me on, by the way, which was my first video. So I hope you enjoyed it. What really helps me a lot is if you go to my Instagram, the chubby hubby cook and like it, follow it, share it, follow me. Um, go to my Facebook page, the chubby hubby cook. Go to my website at thechubbyhubbycook.com or go to my YouTube channel. And of all those, of all those socials, you can find me there. Give me all the love you can. Tell your friends, tell your family. I'd love to see it, and I look forward to cooking more for you. Take care. Bye-bye.